Hello, my name is Ben from Ben Stacy Solutions and today we're going to look at our part two of our shotgun video. But before we get to that, I've got some news to share. We have just literally like half an hour ago sold our house. Um, for those of you who know us, this has been something we've had on the cards for a long, long time, but it's finally happened. In fact, probably by the time you see this, it's all kind of going through. The reason I want to share that with you now is two reasons. First of all, if I seem a bit excited in this video, I might be talking a bit faster than I normally do. Uh, that's the reason why. The second reason is because for a long time I've wanted to do a bit of a tour around this space, show you all that's going on here, but right now it's a complete mess because in preparation of moving house we actually moved a few bits of furniture and things out of the house into here for some storage space so there's like a corner over there that's just full of house storage stuff so right now this place is a complete tip it's absolutely crazy um, but hopefully now that the house move is going ahead then that's going to be cleared out and this space will become um, much more usable again and I can then give you a bit of a tour around and you can see all of this space. But today we are talking about shotgun mics again. Last time we started looking at these we did our shotgun shootout, we had all the mics lined up just along here. I went down them one by one, uh, we listened to them and I made some recommendations as to which ones I thought came out the best. Now today we're going to be picking back up on this but today we've got six ways in which we can make use of shotgun mics in a church context, in a church situation. I know this is something that people have been really interested in, I've had lots of comments and questions and feedback from this so hopefully today we're going to answer some of those questions, we're going to go through and look at what do we do with these microphones? We've, we've worked out which ones are going to be the best ones, um, but actually how are we going to use them? What are we going to do with them? So this is my six ways that you can make use of a shotgun mic in a church situation. Let's have a look. Happy day, happy day So these are my six recommended ways for using a shotgun mic in a church situation. There might be other ways that you could use a shotgun mic as well. I have seen people do other things with them and if that works for you then that's great. The number one rule that I have about sound is if it sounds right, then it is right. And so if it works for you and if it works in your situation, then go for it. That's great. There's no problem. But these are the six uses that I have used for shotgun mics. Um, and maybe this will be helpful for you. So number one, unsurprisingly, I spoke about it all the way through the last video. Lectins for me is the number one place where I'm going to start off using a shotgun mic. I would go for this one, the little Audio-Technica 8875R. This was the cheapest microphone that we reviewed last time. It's about 165 quid. Um, again, very comparable to the just standard pencil condenser microphone. This was the ATM 33A or 8033. And this was about 190 quid. So actually this is slightly more expensive. But for a lectern position, I think this one does a really great job. So the number one place that I'm going to go to for a shotgun mic is always going to be a lectern. When I say a lectern, I mean any kind of fixed speech position. If there's anywhere that anyone's going to go in your church to speak from, that would be where I'd be looking to put one of these. It's going to work best in a fixed location because it's a wired mic. You don't want to have too much movement on it. This mic also isn't going to have great handling noise. So if you're having to handhold this mic, then that's not really going to work very well. It needs to be stand mounted. It needs to be relatively fixed. You don't want to be moving this around too much. But if you've got any fixed position, a pulpit, a lectern, even just speaking from a music stand, or even if there's just a, a corner, a side of the stage or something that people would go to talk from, whether it's reading the Bible, praying into it, whatever it might be, if there's a fixed location where people will be speaking from, then I'd go for something like this, the little discreet microphone. Because this mic's that little bit shorter, it means it's 
got that wider angle of acceptance that doesn't roll off anywhere near as quickly when you go off to the side so you get the the length of the shotgun mic it will pick up from that distance and it will pick up whether you're taller or shorter it's going to just be that bit more forgiving so for a fixed speech position shotgun mic something like this is going to be great number two the second place i'm going to use a shotgun mic is going to be at a wedding the last thing you want to be doing at a wedding is trying to wire up the bride or the groom with something like a lapel mic or a headset mic they are not going to thank you for trying to wire up their nice suit or their nice dress with microphones and radio packs and all that kind of stuff you know the bride spent six hours getting her hair done and now you want to try and get a mic into it it's not going to go down well with anybody so a shotgun mic here again is going to work great Possibly here you might be able to get away with something a little bit longer. This is where pairing a shotgun microphone with a little bass stand like this can be really, really useful. A little setup like this can be nice and discreet. You can pop this on the side of a stage um, or just down by their feet somewhere, almost point it straight up in the air. And as they stand over to say their vowels, this can pick them up from just pretty much straight below them pointing straight up into their face. And doing that, you don't have to worry about wiring them up, you don't have to worry about getting radio mic packs anywhere or anything like that. You can just stick this on the platform and you're good to go. The only thing you might want to do to improve on this is uh, to take something like this little T-bar. This allows you to put two mic clamps on either side with a shotgun mic on either side and then you can just angle them slightly to point at bride and groom. Have that slightly more accurate miking, pointing one mic at each person. That might just improve that sound a little bit, but either way, this should work quite well. And there's no reason, again, why this little microphone wouldn't work here as well, particularly if you use the little T-bar. Putting a pair of these, one on either side to pick up the bride and groom, could just be a bit more discreet and actually could work quite well. A lot of it will come down to how much space you have and whether you've got a bigger platform, a bigger space, you might be able to get away with something this sort of size more easily. If you're quite a small church, quite compact, not a lot of space, then actually something small and discreet like this could work just as well um, and be nice nice and hidden. You could even, if you're really clever about it, you could perhaps hide it behind a, a flower display or something like that um, and get it really hidden out of the way. So that's weddings. Next on the list is baptisms or anything that's involving water really. Obviously water and electrical stuff don't work well together so in this case you really want to be doing something where you can move the electrical equipment as far away from the water as you possibly can and again this is where shotguns come into their own. Because the shotgun's going to allow you to pick up from that greater distance you can move the microphone physically further away from the water. You don't have to worry about damaging the equipment, you don't have to worry about damaging the people having electrical items anywhere near water and you can still pick up everything that's going to be going on while, this, while the baptism is taking place. So again it might work for you to pair this with a nice little stand like this or depending on your situation maybe you might need a slightly taller stand. Another option in this instance would be actually to hang the microphone from above. Do be aware if you're going to do that that you might well pick up the sound of the water moving around. You might get some of the splashing sound and things as you're pointing this straight down almost over the top of the water. So just think about whether you want that sound or not. In some ways it might be quite nice to have that. It might give a bit more of the ambient of the event into the mix of the sound and that could be really useful for you but it might also be distracting and it might be problematic so it might not be something that you want to have that's a decision for you to make. This is one of the key things that's really important to think about when you're using a shotgun mic. Because it's very directional, it's gonna pick up whatever is in front of it. This can have a lot of benefit. This can mean that you can use sound quite creatively. So if you did point this down into the water, you could pick up the sound of that water, the movement of that water, and amplify that and help to give some ambient sound into the building so that people can have that slightly more immersive experience, if you like. But equally that could be distracting and so you need to decide is that something you want or is that something you want to avoid. But either way you can use this microphone quite creatively in that instance. If we were to go back again to our little 
pencil condenser type microphone that's a much wider pickup, if you wanted to avoid picking up the water with this, you might struggle to do it a lot more because it's going to pick up from a much, much wider angle. So even if you did point it away from the water, actually, because it's picking up from the sides, it might well still pick up a lot more of that water than the shotgun mic will. The shotgun mic is going to be much narrower, much tighter, and so if you want to avoid that sound, you're going to have a much better chance of doing it with this than you will with any other type of microphone, really. Sorry, excuse me just a second. Did I say I'm selling the house? Just trying to arrange that. Don't know if I mentioned it. Okay, so number four. Now this one I think is a really important one. I think this one is something that is both really important now and is just gonna become more and more important as time goes on, and that is ambient sound or picking up the sound of your congregation. Now the reason I say this is so important is because I think there's a lot of uses that, that pretty much everybody is gonna be using for this now, but as the technology starts to change, we're moving more and more into digital mixing, and as we do that, more and more people are able to do things like in-ear monitoring is becoming really popular. It's a great way to do your monitors um, and it works really, really well. But one thing that you quite often lose when you go over to in-ear monitoring is the sound of the congregation. One of the benefits of in-ear monitoring is it cuts out background noise. And people can often find it quite difficult if they can't hear the congregation, they can't hear the singing, they can't hear what's going on in the room. It can be quite difficult to judge how you're playing as a band and how you're leading people in worship. So that connection can be lost between the band and the congregation. So you quite often want to feed that back into your mix in order to make sure you're picking up that ambient sound. But another change that's also happening quite a lot with technology at the minute is a move towards certainly at least being able to record services and record both audio and video and even to move towards live streaming services. This is something that again lots of people are doing already um, and I think is only going to continue to grow as time goes on. But one of the things that's really important with any kind of recording is that you're capturing the ambient sound. Even if we only take for an example for the moment preaching our church at the minute, all we do is to record our sermon and make that available online. But quite often during a sermon, the preacher might tell a joke or make some kind of comment that requires some kind of a response from the congregation. If all you're doing is picking up the preacher, then all you're going to hear is the joke without any kind of response. So the preacher will tell a joke and all you hear is tumbleweed. And clearly that doesn't really help anybody. If you want to share that message with people online and they don't get that response, they don't understand kind of, well, is this, is this person telling a joke or are they not? I can't really quite tell what's going on here because that's, that information is just lost. Um, I can't get the context of this situation. It doesn't help with that sort of storytelling, if you like. And context is really important for so many things and being able to just get that response, get that feedback, get that understanding of what is going on right now. Is this a joke or was that a serious statement? I don't know because there wasn't a response to it. And so miking up ambient and using ambient recording well is really crucial both to, as I say, a recording or to live streaming. They're both going to be really, really important. So you need to make sure it's something you do really, really well. If you've ever been to an event that you know has been recorded and you get to the end and you think, yeah, that was a great event, great concert, great whatever it might have been, I want to get that copy of that recording and listen back to it. And then you take that recording home and you listen back to it and you say, actually, that was nothing like what it was like on the night. Have you ever been there where you think, actually, yeah, this, this recording just doesn't do it justice. This wasn't like that on the night. It was so much better when we were there. The recording is just, it's nothing like as good. So often, so much of that comes down to the ambient sound. Can you capture that excitement and energy in the room? When you're at that live event, there is something about the atmosphere of that room, the energy, the excitement, the passion that's in that room. And when you take that and try to put it onto a recording, you need to try and capture that ambient feel. How can we capture that energy in that room? And that is where your shotgun mics are really going to come in. When it comes to capturing ambience, I would use a pair of shotgun mics. 
positioned almost above the stage, pointing back into the room. Um, you need to remember again that there's this issue of what's directly in front of the microphone is going to be the strongest point. So try not to point them into a, an empty aisle, for example. If you've got an aisle down the centre of your room and you're pointing these microphones into the middle, you're pointing them into empty space. And also the slightly embarrassing issue of if you've got somebody in the church who has a very big, strong voice and you're pointing this microphone straight at that person, uh, you're going to just capture a whole lot of them coming through onto your recording. So maybe just try and position these microphones slightly strategically to try and avoid those things, but make sure you're just generally picking up the sound of the congregation, point them to where people are, um, and try and give it as much of a general feel as you possibly can. The further back the microphone goes, the wider it's going to be at the point where it's picking up sound. So actually having these positions slightly further out will mean that you're going to pick up a slightly broader picture of the congregation rather than just a one specific person. So in this context, rather than having the microphone a few centimetres away, you're going to want it a good few metres away from people. So try to position it a reasonable distance away from the congregation. If you have something like a lighting bar or some kind of truss above the stage, then that could be a great place to position this, pointing it down into the room. The other thing to think about is what's on the floor. Do you have a hard wooden floor or do you have hard wooden pews even? Because those kind of surfaces are going to be very reflective. So if you're pointing this down onto a hard wooden floor, you're going to get a lot of sound bouncing back up again and those reflections might not work so well. And so in that case, maybe what you might want to do is rather than having it almost up pointing straight down, perhaps bring it slightly lower and point it more across the congregation, put it more towards head height or perhaps just slightly above head height and point it across the people rather than down onto the floor. But with ambient sound, if you really want to capture it well, I wouldn't stop with just a pair of uh, shotgun mics. I would actually add into that something like, well, something like this. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Again, these come in all shapes and sizes. And this particular type of microphone is what we call a side address microphone where most microphones are going to be what we call end address. That means you need to speak into the end of the microphone to pick up the sound. If you tried to position a microphone like this to speak into the end of it, you actually wouldn't get any sound or you certainly wouldn't get very good sound. You need to position it so you're speaking into the side of this microphone, side address microphone. So what I would look to do if you really want to capture your ambient sound well is to have a pair of these or some kind of large diaphragm condenser type microphone towards the back of the building, as I say with your shotgun mic towards the front, shotgun mic pointing down into your congregation, your large diaphragm condensers at the back of the room pointing back into the congregation. This is then going to pick up some of the sound of the congregation as well, but this is going to pick up a much more general sound of the congregation. This is going to pick up a lot of reflections. This is going to pick up sound bouncing off walls and ceilings and all those kind of things. But it's also going to mix that with some of the sound of the band, some of the sound of the PA system, all those kind of things are all going to be bouncing back into these microphones. So this is going to give you a much more general sense of the room. And if you combine that with your very direct sound of the congregation from your shotgun mics, the mixture of those two things is going to work really, really well for you and give you a nice blend of general ambience with the direct sound of the congregation and give you something that will work really well as a nice sound for the whole room overall. The final thing you can do with those microphones to improve it even further still is going to be to time align those microphones. Now there's quite a good video online, I'll see if I can find it and I'll stick the link below, about a method that uses popping balloons to actually do this. Now for some of you this might be like a step too far, you might not worry about this, this might just be one extra thing that you don't need to worry about. But for those of you who really want to do this well, particularly if you're at the point of wanting to live stream, if you're wanting to take your service, including all the worship, and push this out onto some kind of online platform, 
this might be something that you really want to look at and really want to consider to really capture the sound of the room, the ambience of the room, the energy and the excitement in the room and to feed that into your ambient to use it for your live stream or whatever else it might be or it, you might even want that for your in-ear monitor mix. Then this final step might be that extra cherry on the cake, the extra little bit that just really helps to polish that sound and to give that final touch to that sound. So if you're interested in looking at how to time align your ambient mics and get everything all nicely aligned, um, check the link below um, and that video will take you through how to do that. Okay, so number five, this is gonna be kids plays or just plays in general, drama sketches, all those kind of things that you might have going on. The key area, the one area that I would tend to use it for is gonna be the Christmas nativity play, that kind of thing. Again, I'm gonna be looking at bringing in something like this little stand here and probably pairing it with a little T-bar on the top and probably using mics in pairs for this kind of thing. So in general, you have two ways of picking up kids for nativity type plays or whatever it might be, any kind of drama sketch, any kind of play. The first is to put headset mics on them or some kind of radio type microphone that they can be walking around with and, and using that. And in some situations that can work well. It requires you to have quite a lot of radio mics. Ideally, you want one per child involved in the play. So if you've got 20 kids involved in the play, then ideally you want 20 radio mics to do that with. You can sometimes get away with just miking up the key characters, but then that can be a bit strange when you move from the key people speaking to then somebody else speaking, and one of them's amplified and one of them isn't. Um, it can all get a bit messy. The other downside to that method is that pretty much every time I've ever seen this done, the kids have just utterly destroyed the headset mics. In my experience, kids and microphones, just not a good combination, best avoided as much as possible. Unless you're really watching them very closely and making sure they do take real care of those microphones, chances are they're probably gonna get destroyed. My preference for something like that is gonna to be to use the shotgun mics. As I say, I would be using them in pairs, putting them on those T-bar stands and then trying to cover as much of the stage as you can. And depending on the size of your stage, you might need multiples of these. If you've got a small stage, you might possibly get away with one pair, but quite often you're probably gonna need four or even six of them or possibly even eight or more to cover across the front of the stage. If you're getting to a point where you've got such a big stage as needing more than six microphones to mic up that area, that's the point where I'd probably say either try and not spread out so much, try and keep it all a bit tighter together so that it's easier to mic that area up rather than filling the whole of the stage, maybe try and keep the production either to one side or in the middle of the platform, don't use the whole of that space. Or if it is such a big production that it needs the whole of that space, then probably you do wanna be miking everybody individually. This is the kind of thing that you could totally hire in these microphones for. You don't need to buy six microphones just so that you can mic up your platform once a year for a Christmas production. Find a good local hire company who can hire you these microphones. You could probably hire them for a week or so and it would still cost you less than it would to actually buy them in the first place. And if they are only going to get used once a year, it's probably a far better way to do it. Okay, and finally we come into land with the number six, the last one of the lot. This is miking up a choir or some kind of an ensemble or something like that, where you don't want to mic too closely. You don't want to have 25 mics, one for each member of the choir on the platform. You just want that big group sound. Now this again is a situation where the shotgun microphone can be useful, but you need to use it with real care. If you get this wrong at this point, you could end up just miking up an individual who's directly in front of this microphone and not give yourself that big group sound at all, but simply just pick out a soloist from amongst that group. So you do need to be careful with how you do this and you do need to be careful with your mic placement and what exactly you're gonna be doing with this microphone to make sure you get the best results. The reason I'd say to consider using a microphone like this, and I'd say consider because it might not actually be the best one to use in this situation, but I would consider it because it's so good at picking up from that greater distance. But you really do need to think about how you're gonna use this microphone. 
So for example here, if you had your choir all lined up one side of the stage, so everybody's all in a nice line along the back of the stage or whatever it might be, I wouldn't use this microphone to sort of mic straight onto that choir, that row of people. That's where you're gonna just be picking up one individual in amongst that whole group. Instead here, what I'll be doing, instead of micing straight onto the choir, actually moving this mic off to a side, one side or the other, and micing almost across the front of the choir. This way, instead of picking up one individual, you're going to be picking up far more of the sound across that choir than you will direct on to a single person. And again here, I would also look to probably pair it with something like this, the large diaphragm condenser again. A combination of these two mics to pick up the general and to give you that much greater level at the distance, those two microphones can work really well in partnership here to pick up your ensemble, to pick up your choir, to pick up whatever it might be. As I say, use it with caution, use it with care. Don't just stick a microphone straight onto that group because you're probably just going to pick out a soloist. This is definitely an instance where you consider this as a possible tool that might help and might improve the situation but if you're not careful with it, it could actually make it a whole lot worse and actually ruin what you're trying to create instead of helping you and giving you a benefit. Ugh. So, hopefully you now know what shotgun mics are, which ones are the best ones, and how you can use them in your church. They're a really useful microphone. They do do a very specific job, but they do it really, really well. And there's lots of places in a church context where that's a really useful thing to have. So hopefully that's, that's been helpful to you. Hopefully you've got some information from that that you can make use of. And as always, if you've got any more questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Website link below, but just go to benstacysolutions.uk and you can get in touch with us there or get in touch with us on one of the social media platforms. We'll be quite happy to talk with you, um, answer any more questions that you might have or help you out in any way with the shotgun mic. So if you found this helpful, like, comment, subscribe, all that normal stuff. Join in the conversation, push that button, and we'll see you on the next video.